this is the latest in the 3D printing world. It's to hold my stickers that kind of go on calendars to remind me to do things during the day. Lots of the stickers, I should put this down and I will gain an extra hand. I'll get back to two. Well, one, because I'm using one. Anyways, yeah, so they don't all fit because, uh, nah, but I now print them at a smaller size anyway, so the new batches come in. It's just I'm behind on some things, so I got a whole stack of the things that I probably, actually I enjoy doing these. I printed out just, to, actually those because I do them so much, I did, but yeah. And running, I don't really track on the calendar anymore, so I could get that because it gets tracked somewhere else. Um, and then the new stuff, happy face is protein. Anyway, it's not about that. That's what I'm using it for, but this is the double decker version. Uh, and as you can see, so. Funny thing is this is printed in a rough mode, so it's actually not the best quality because it's more of a sampling, kind of get an idea of a rough draft before I actually print it in high quality because it takes twice as long. However, um, it turned out pretty well. So it's like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna keep that. I'm just gonna use that. And I have the, you know, the template so I can print it again. But anyway, so it's double decker. So that replaces the old one which had much thicker walls, and you could definitely see the uh, difference in the print quality in that one. Uh, but yeah, much thicker walls, which, I mean, these guys, I could probably break it if I tried. Um, There's no need to have so much plastic used on the walls, I realized that after the print, but it only hold one, two, three, four, five, six, 12, and the new one actually holds like 16, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 16, so uh, yeah. And the funny thing is this one, it warped off the bed a lot. Um, and I got some new plastic that's much better, even though a tiny, tiny, tiny bit did warp on my edge. Um, it's hard to prevent that, especially on something that covers so much ground area. But anyway, I think I said that already. I gotta get rid of that word. Uh, I use it too much. Don't even realize it until I, I'm aware of it, become conscious of it. That's the new print tray holders. This is an example of something you can do with uh, 3D printing. You can do anything, but it's just completely custom. You just could not buy this probably anywhere. Someone's gonna go find it, but you could not buy this anywhere. It's just something that holds 16 little stickers that kind of at a little angle. Um, and, uh, and we can see how this whole thing is made. The very beginning, I think it all started, well, it all started with my impetus of why I did it. I needed something and you can do anything when you have a 3D printer. So this is Blender, which actually isn't the best program for doing something like this. It's not really made for this, but it can do it. It's just there are better programs, but I'd have to learn them. I'd have to actually sit down and watch some videos for like you know, an hour and I already know how to use this. So again, while it's not the best, it does work. Uh, so I basically modeled this original piece, actually it was this piece, and it originally looked like that, um, which was, I think, I don't even remember how I did it, it's not important, but uh, it probably started out with a cube and added some things to it. Um, yeah, actually I would have added a bevel modifier right there, and I would have brought down the back so it has that slope. Um, oh, and then I put a cube in the middle, and I did a Boolean subtraction, so I took out the middle, and then there you go. Add an array modifier, which basically just say, as you say, make duplicate this nine times or eight times or yeah, times eight. One times eight is eight. And then copied it over here. Again, move the bottom down. At first I had like a long cube that went underneath. I thought, why am I doing that? Um, I can just go and take the bottom and slide it down. Um, it's kind of tricky to do this because it doesn't snap very well to other objects. I think the new version might, but I haven't found any good instructions on how to do that. Same thing, an array modifier, and then you would go and export that to an SDL. Um, and that would be it for the um, kind of the blend creation phase, I guess you would call it. That, that part would be done. With the creation phase being done, you import it into another program called Cura. Cura? Cura? I don't know. I don't see how it's supposed to be pronounced. Doesn't matter to me. Um, Ultimaker Cura. And this uh, is a program that slices it up into basically a coding format that the 3D printer can understand because it needs to know how to build it. So um, yeah, you import it into here, make sure everything looks good and look around and I could see, okay, that looks pretty much what I modeled, I guess. Um, and then I picked the, the how, uh, what quality to make it and it'll tell me the different times it'll take. Wall thickness, like how thick to make the walls before it uses a process sort of just kind of making a skeleton of the walls inside fill, um, which saves you material. Because again, if it 
works and you don't need it to be solid plastic the whole way through, why would you do that? Um, printing temperature is based on a lot of the stuff you just leave to automatic. Um, at that point, I would save it to a file. It tells me five because I've already saved it to a file once. I already know five hours, 37 minutes. What if I did decide I want the super high quality, um, keep my stuff, yeah, keep my stuff, and then slice it up again. And now I can see the next one would take 11 hours, wow. I mean, it's fine, you're going to bed. Uh, yeah, set it and forget it and wake up in the morning. Well, actually, that's a long, that's a lot of sleep, 12 hours. What are you doing? Must be a weekend. Uh, but yeah, 12 hours later, you got your print. If nothing went wrong along the way. Um, and I think you can kind of see the layers somewhere. Eh, I don't usually look at it here. But this is the part where you basically get it ready to print, say, your settings, and you're good to go. You're not done yet. Not done yet. So the next part, you would go to Octoprint or Octoprint? Octopi. Octopi what it's called. There is an octoprint though. Anyway, octopi, what it will do is tell you you need to update your firmware because it's going to catch fire. Uh, yeah, someday. Um, anyway, I got to do that. There's a lot of updates. I, I never, they're just kind of annoying. All right, so what this is, this is sort of an interface software to get your a proxy software to get your files to your 3D printer. Um, otherwise, you have to load it onto memory cards and then bring the memory cards into your garage or whatever, and that's kind of a pain. So this one just does it over a network, and it's much easier. So I would basically uh, upload the file on my computer to the Octoprint, or the little server basically connected to your printer, and I would say send the file over, and I can even tell it to go ahead and start. So remotely start the printer, start the printing. but. I still would have a, a trip to the garage to make sure everything's in place, make sure the print bed's good, and leveling the print bed, if you haven't done that in a little while, which is usually like a day. I eat probably almost before every job, you level the print bed, it's annoying, but what can you do? Um, okay, so when you got that, and then you say start, and then it'll tell you. So you kind of can monitor it from here. You can see the, uh, how hot the tool is, the bed, Oh man, it's, I guess it's still on from yesterday, so I should probably turn that off. I mean, it doesn't need to be 20 degrees Celsius right now. It's just, that's a waste. Um, and then this will tell you the temperatures as it goes up. So it'll, once you start it, it goes up. Once it reaches the uh, desired temperatures, it starts printing. Uh, and it's a good time to go out there, you know, be around your printer to make sure everything's started off, got off to the right start, especially the first few layers, which are um, sort of making sure they adhere to the print bed, the hot bed. You don't want to have that mess up because if that gets messed up, you could have a very big tangled spool at the very end if you don't check it. But most of the time you don't check it. Other cool thing is a th camera that's connected to that little print server so I can actually see. This is a live video of the bed right now, how it looks. Um, and nothing's there, nothing's printing on it. So, But when it was printing on it, I can kind of check it out every once in a while just to make sure. You're mainly making sure there's no big tangled spool of wires. Um, that kind of ruined it. Um, and then you can see where things are at the, la the layers. Oh, look. So... Um, yeah, you can kind of see the, how the first layer is going to go, which is actually really cool. Oh yeah, through the whole process. So I mean, I never really use this this kind of stuff, but it is really interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. And then I don't know what these other ones are. Oh, cool terminal. Time lapse is actually a cool one. This is like the final thing where it records a time lapse of your print in action. And I almost never use these, except for if I'm making a video or something, but it is kind of cool to have this. Um, and I need to go erase some of these things since they're kind of no good now. But I do have the last one, um, and it's just automatic. I got it set, it automatically does it. I don't even know if I don't use it. Once in a while I do want to go back and see how things look, or maybe where things got a mess if something went wrong. So these are all the steps it would take to get something from your brain to the actual printer and start it on the printer. And finally, we have the 3D printing box and the 3D printer inside. This is a little uh, kind of a spy flap where you can kind of look down and see how things are going. The printer is actually done, so there's not much to see. Nothing to see here. Um, and this little flap, actually, I have that because 
The whole idea of this big box, which a suitcase came in, but I realized at some point this actually solves a lot of problems, is you want to kind of keep the heat consistent. Duct tape, yeah, works on everything except ducks, ironically enough. Um, heating ducts, I guess they say it's not really great for that. Uh, all right, so you go inside, you got the 3D printer. This is a, I bought that actually for photography, but you know what? It works great um, for kind of keeping it lit up. And that's the 3D printer. This is some decent, uh, a decent spool, but it's actually going by really fast. I don't know what I've done. These things are actually taking a lot of my uh, spool away. They're not cheap, like 30, 30 to 40 dollars for a decent one um, and there's like I said the 3d printer kind of the computer that connects to the printer itself and then you've got the remote which is actually a Raspberry Pi with a camera and it points up there and then you can see the prints in action and you keep track of them some tools to uh, help and again this now this is a glass bed that is a broken glass uh, kind of chipped glass on the other side of it. So it, when that happened, I just turned it over and now I got more glass, but I used um, some material that sticks so well, so well, it actually stuck to the glass. So that was not good. Um, yeah, what can you do? But it actually won't stick to the, uh, the blue tape. So I'm kind of in a bit of a quandary how to solve that one. Anyway, this thing, like I said, it'll keep, it keeps your, uh, um, temperatures at a certain level so it's kind of ready to go but on the other hand it also wastes electricity in fact the light light will come off now too now it's nice and dark that can stay on that uses about nothing and I will actually return to this when I have another print which might not be too long because I have another idea in my head that I would like to see turned into a 3d print so that's everything you didn't want to know about 3d printing